Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to a new week of school. I hope that you had a good rest over the weekend and you're ready to go again. Well, I certainly had a good rest over the weekend for my tiring week of training in the army. You know, if I had a choice, I would rather be in school playing Kahoot with my students like you all. Now, anyway, I have some good news for you. This weekend, I finally, after four months, finished playing Pokemon Sun and Moon. Aha! Uh -huh. I finished this game and I'm sure some of you have seen it or maybe some friends have played it. And of course, maybe more of you play this. I know some of you all like to play Overwatch. Never played it before, but it seems like the thing nowadays. Uh, you know, all these games uh, are actually a form of software. They are programs. They are um, programs that run on certain systems. And the systems that they run on are the hardware, right? Gaming laptops, laptops, uh, gaming consoles. These are the hardware which we play and run the software on. Now, over the past week, we've been learning about the process of photosynthesis, right? We've seen the equation, which you guys must, must, must know. We've seen about how we can study the process of uh, photosynthesis through different experiments. Uh, we looked at limiting factors and graphs, and how do we read these kind of graphs? Right, so we've looked at the process of photosynthesis. We've looked at, in a sense, the software of photosynthesis. And now, we're going to turn our attention to the hardware of photosynthesis. Where does photosynthesis occur in a plant? I mean, we, know where, we know what photosynthesis is, what it does, but where does it occur in a plant? And the majority of it, of course, uh, occurs in leaves, right? Because leaves are where we have our chlorophyll and and uh, it is in the leaves, it is in the hardware of the leaves that photosynthesis takes place. Uh, of course, there are some plants with uh, some modifications. Here is a uh, cactus, uh, where a lot of photosynthesis also takes place in the stem, uh, which contains chlorophyll. Now, in a similar way, leaves are also a bit like bakeries. Now, here's Larry. Say hello, Larry. Larry the leaf. And uh, he needs to carry out photosynthesis, right? He needs to make glucose, right? He wants to make glucose, carbohydrates, uh, so that he can have nutrients to survive. Now, here are some problems for Larry. First, where is Larry going to get his raw materials? Where is he going to get his ingredients? Carbon dioxide and water. How is he going to get it? Second, how is he going to deliver the products? Once he makes the glucose, where and how is he going to deliver it to its final destination? And lastly, Larry also produces some byproducts. In the case of photosynthesis, he produces glucose, yes, but he also produces oxygen. And oxygen, in a sense, is, is a byproduct of photosynthesis. So, how is he going to deal with that? How is he going to remove? The byproducts from himself. Now in this lesson, we're going to see how Larry the leaf and his structure, the way that he is designed, is related to his function. Right? Because Larry the leaf needs to obtain the raw materials for photosynthesis and he also needs to deal with the products of photosynthesis. So we're going to try to see the relationship between Larry's structure and function. Now at this point, the bells should be ringing in your head, right? Because you heard structure and you heard function. And in biology, structure and function is a very important theme. Now, so in this chapter, you're going to be learning how to identify and label uh, the structure of a typical leaf, the inside structure. And you're going to need to explain how the structure plays a part in photosynthesis. Okay, so how every part of the leaf helps the leaf to perform photosynthesis. So let's begin with the external features of a leaf. Here is a leaf. 
this is not Larry the leaf because Larry the leaf has eyes and this is just a normal leaf. But anyway, this leaf has certain external features, right? Firstly, you will see uh, what we call the petio or the leaf stalk, right? Just go and pluck any leaf. Okay, don't pluck the leaves, just pick them up from the, the ground and take a look. You will see a leaf stalk, right? Besides that, you will also see the leaf blade. Uh, the scientific word for it is the lamina. And besides that, you will also see networks of very tiny veins. Networks of veins that, well, we'll see what they are for. So in this first part, we're going to be looking at the question, how is the external structure of a leaf adapted for photosynthesis? Alright, so take a look at this page in your textbook for the pure biology students. Pause the video here. I want you to read first before going on. So read this page, give yourself about five minutes, and then move on with the video. Alright? Uh, you should be looking at photosynthesis, uh, nutrition in plants, notes number three. All right, most of your information can be found there. All right, pause for now. Okay, hope they are done with reading. Um, we're gonna move on and just discuss our reading together. All right. Okay, so we start with the petio or the leaf stalk. Now, what does the petio do? Right, its main function is to hold the leaf upright all right so it it helps to hold the leaf upright and that helps it to obtain sunlight and air okay without the patio uh, the leaves will not be able to be propped up upright so nicely okay, it is a bit like this so what do you see here solar panels right so these solar panels need to be propped really up upright so that they're able to receive sunlight. Okay, it's so the same way uh, leaves uh, need to be propped up by the patio so that they're able to receive sunlight and obtain air, which are both needed for photosynthesis. Secondly, when you were reading about the lamina, you would have read that it has a very large surface area, large and flat surface area. So why is it that leaves are large and flat most of the time? Right, rather than small and you know not much surface area. Well, hopefully, uh, you realize that that's so that it can maximize the amount of sunlight absorbed. Right, maximize sunlight absorbed for photosynthesis. Now, the second point is that the lamina is very thin. Right, if you look at the leaf from the side you would realize that it is very thin. So why is it that leaves are not big and thick? Well, that is to allow the rapid diffusion of carbon dioxide into the leaf. All right, later on, we'll see that carbon dioxide enters the leaf, most of it through the lower surface of the leaf. If the leaf was very thick, then the carbon dioxide would take very long to diffuse from the bottom of the leaf to the top of the leaf. Now, if the leaf was very thin, then carbon dioxide would diffuse very rapidly through the whole leaf. Now, it's a bit like how we clean up a spill, right? When you have spilt milk, right? You don't cry, you just pick up a cloth and you clean it up. Now, how do you clean it up? First, you, you know, make sure that you spread out your cloth, have a nice, large, surface area and then make sure that you know your cloth usually is quite thin right so you could absorb all the water up very rapidly right you don't usually have a small thick cloth okay that wouldn't be very effective now finally you would have read that leaves have a very extensive or large network of veins Okay, the network of veins is also very highly branched and that is so that the veins can carry out efficient transport of firstly water and also nutrients okay, throughout the leaf. And it is a bit like this railway network in Singapore, okay, the ever-expanding MRT network. I used to get very excited about new stations and new lines. 
Yeah, and uh, you know, the more extensive and highly branched it is, the more efficient the transport. So in the same way, leaves have a very extensive network of veins. Alright, so now we're done with the external features, external structure of a leaf. Now, we're going to go in. And we're going to look at the internal structure of a leaf. So here's my leaf, and if I uh, cut a cross section of it, that means I slice it this way, and I look at the cross section, and I expand it and look at it under the microscope, or in fact using a magnifying glass, I will see this cross section. I will see many layers of different cells. Right, because in fact, a leaf is an organ. Right, I hope you remember this from the cells chapter. A leaf is an organ, and the organ contains many different tissues. So there are many different layers of tissue in a leaf. And here, you see a diagram of the cross-section of the leaf. All right, so this is just a different diagram uh, of, the, of the leaf cross-section. So here at the top, you see a layer, tissue A. Right, they're made out of cells which look quite similar. Tissue B here is made out of cells that also look quite similar to one another, but different to the cells in tissue A. Tissue C and D form the vascular bundle. Okay, the vascular bundle is involved in transport of substances. And tissues E and tissue F as well in the leaf. Now what I want you to do is I want you to pick up your textbook and I would like you to read your textbook. Now I would like you to read about what is the structure of each tissue layer and how each layer is adapted for photosynthesis. So these are the textbook pages. I would like you to start reading it and you can also start to fill up the table in your notes. Now, helping phrases can be found on the last page of your notes. Let me show you what I mean. Right, if you look at your notes, <clears throat> here is the diagram with the tissues A to F. Uh, for each layer, I want you to read your textbook, and I want you to tell me what is this layer called, what are the... What is its structure? Are there anything interesting, any interesting features? And finally, how is it adapted for photosynthesis? Okay, so do it for all the tissue layers. And there are some helping words on the last page. See the last page? So for example, what is it called? Alright, so one of the layers, let's say tissue A, is one of these things. Okay, tissue A is one of these things. What is its structure and how is it adapted for photosynthesis? Okay, so basically you can just uh you know read and then put this into the table. Now take note that the phrases in the same row are not necessarily related. That means that let's say palisade mesophyll is not necessarily this, it's not necessarily this. Okay, so don't just look across the row and put the whole row in. Okay, so each row is independent of one another. Alright, happy reading, and when we come back, we're going to discuss our reading together. So give yourself about maybe 10 minutes to read and try, 15 minutes, alright? Okay, that's all for this video. See you after your reading. Okay, take note, you can discuss with one another as well.